Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Moist Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. I got some uh, tip videos for you today, some more defensive tip videos. Part two, really, of uh, how to be a better defender, I guess as you call it. I'll try to pop a link for uh, part one. As you can tell, I'm a little bit under the weather as I'm, uh, uh, you know, fighting back some uh, some cold symptoms here. Uh, but other than that, the show must go on. So we're going to basically do after the snap uh, how to use her type of tips uh, to make you guys a better defender. If you guys haven't seen my gameplay videos, I really think defense is probably my forte. Uh, my offensive plays are pretty good too, but uh, you got to be an all-around player to be honest with you. But uh, this is for people that struggle on defense. If you want to see anything else, offense, uh, whatever, special teams, I don't care. Uh, let me know in the comment section. Give me some ideas uh, what type of tips you guys need um, to get better at your game but uh, obviously the last video like I said I did the uh, pre-snap portion this is going to be uh, after the play starts uh, the number one thing that I would say to do and I'm obviously doing this backwards make sure you're matching personnel uh, on the other side um, so I'll go ahead I'm going to start off and let's say I'm going to start off in a 3-4 I really um, am starting to like what I'm seeing out of the 3-4 so we're going to go 3-4 Tampa 2 uh, it's a real vanilla coverage uh, and then we're going to, um, I'll pick random single back. Says, so there's pretty much a, as good a chance of a run as a pass as there is out of this. So we'll go random this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm basically going to um, just show you, uh, you know, how I would start off a play uh, so that I have the best chance for success. And then I'll, I'll break down uh, some examples in the replay system. Uh, but other than that, real simple. I mean, this looks like it could be a run. Uh, I said in the pre-snap video to pinch your line and spread your linebackers, and that'll really hold down these outside plays. But I think another important tip that I left out is you really want to hide behind your blockers. You want your blockers to get engaged, and you want to be able to run free. So don't be down on the line so that you can get picked up and blocked out of the play. The second you get suction blocked, the play is pretty much over. So make sure you're starting the play uh, behind your blockers, maybe like right in the center, so you have as much time. You want to mirror that running back, because if that running back takes off left, you want to be as close to that as possible. If he takes off right, you want to be as close to that as possible. So if you start off over here and it's it's a play to the left, you're screwed. If you start off over here because you're, you're covering the receiver or something, and it's a play to the right, you're, you're way out of position and you're never going to make it. So try to mirror that running back. Sometimes you want to say, if you think it's a pass, like say if I think it's a pass, these two tight ends over here, if the tendency of my opponent says pass, I'm going to basically mirror these two guys. I, I want to be in their area so that when they drop back, I'm cutting off the zone. But I'll show that in the breakdown section a little bit more. So that's typically how you want to start off a play. All right, so here's a good example of um, how you want to, you know, start off a play. I have uh, a yellow. These two guys in the middle here are in yellow zones. So basically, I have um, a computer defender in a yellow over this tight end. So I don't have to worry really worry about him off off of release. Uh, I'm basically, for whatever reason, I, I don't even really have an answer for you, but I was more concerned with the running back on this particular play. This is really kind of choppy. I was more concerned with the running back on this particular play uh, because I know that, that the, the tight end, the way it's set up, he won't get a free release. And that slot receiver, the way it's set up, because he's also in the yellow zone, won't get a free release. So I know that right there, they're gonna the, at least the throwing lanes will be immediately cut off. And the only player whose throwing lane will not be cut off will be the running back. So I chose to take the uh, defender that would be the really the closest to the running back from the start of the play because I know that he would get a free release but it's really at my option I mean at the same point I really could I could have took this guy and tried to use the tight end it really doesn't matter but like I said I think the running back probably had the best chance of coming out of the backfield uh, free and uh, basically making a play uh, based off of the fact that um, I don't know. I just maybe maybe instinct, uh, but other than that, that really was the play. He comes out and runs one of these little quick out routes. It's kind of a check and release, and you can see right here. I just cut it off right away, um, and the second that I cut it off, I can see that the tight end's running free. So I'm going to get back to him and uh, cut off his lane. I'm not really in the area, so if like the pass was quick. Um, it would have been, uh, you know, he had a, a spot, but luckily he turned in. But either way, I'm still cutting off the lane. You don't necessarily want to be, um, you know, airtight to the guy. The only reason I did this was to slow him down because I know I had to stay in my area. So here I cut him off. A lot of times that's a good trick is to knock a receiver off the route. But I know that I'm playing the computer and basically just getting in front of him was going to shut him down. So luckily, like I said, he turns in. I get back in position to the point where uh, I'm at least cutting off the lane. You don't always have to be right in front of the right in front of the guy. And uh, luckily. Matty Ice here 
Um, he basically, once he sees that these are all essentially covered from what his read is, he has to run and he's just chucking out of bounds. He completes it to nobody. All right, so here's another good example of uh, a good user coverage. Now, uh, basically, I'm cutting off, once again, Julio Jones here is in the slot, so that's my zone. I have to immediately cut off uh, whatever drop back he does. The other two guys, this is a three wide to one side, so the other two guys are going to cut off the throwing lane immediately. Um, they won't necessarily always stay in coverage, but I know that the immediate read, the closest receiver, is going to be this, this uh, Julio Jones. Here. Plus, it's also the best receiver, so you have to pay attention to that. So all I'm really going to do here is when he drops back, once again, I'm undercutting the lane. I'm not necessarily covering him, but if this quarterback wants to throw it to him, he's either got to throw it up, you know, high, try to throw it over me, where it's basically going to be up in the air to the point where the safety can get it, or he has to try to basically, he's not, I don't have faith that he's going to thread it right past me. So you can see here, I just drop back, cutting off the throwing lane. If he's going to try to do any other type of pass other than a bullet pass to get it there quick, at this point, it's going to be the safety's responsibility. So he's back there. I know that he's basically in bracket coverage. So uh, once he drops back too far to the point where I know where it's the safety's got him i'm going to come back underneath you can see we got some guys coming across here um, over the middle two receivers so now i'm in perfect position i didn't leave my zone i was smart enough to stay which tip is typical anyway so i didn't leave my zone and now that they're coming in i'm undercutting their options so now now i'm in a perfect position these guys are probably this is a poorly designed play if you want the truth about it because there's two guys way too close to one another give me an opportunity to cover both so if it throw it's if it's thrown over me, I got that covered. If it's thrown underneath me, it's just a quick snap reaction, and I can undercut that too. So that's a really good option. You can see how the ball basically just gets chucked out of bounds uh, because there's just nothing there. He must have been getting to him uh, for him to do that. So that's a really uh, good way to do it. And then another indicator too <clears throat> for when the ball is going to get thrown um, is uh, pressure. You got to keep an eye on the quarterback. He just threw it out of, out of bounds. I'm not getting any pressure here, but just a point. Uh, you have to keep your eye in the backfield at the quarterback because pressure will dictate when the ball is going to get away and that will also dictate where you should go as a last second defender um, if there's somebody open pressure can dictate that quite a bit so like i said just make sure you don't want to cover this guy it would have been a mistake for me to cover this guy face you know face up right in front of him which i'm trying to get the dude you know <laughs> trying to get this thing free so i can show that it would have been a mistake for me to, to line up right in front of him and basically follow him which i see a lot of people doing You're, it's really all about cutting off the throw lanes that's how you get user picks that's how you stop plays you just get in between the quarterback and the receiver uh, and you stay in your zone which is typically in the middle so uh, that's it. I, 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 you know, I wanted to show more, but I think that I got my point across. Uh, if you guys want to see more videos based off of whatever, you know, we're stopping the run, whatever, let me know in the comment section and I'll do that. Other than that, thanks for watching. Mad Money Shit Out.